In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this. This is my multi floppy PC and it has a problem. It supports all kinds of different floppy formats, but right now the keyboard doesn't work and I need to get that fixed. So let's take a look at that and it's coming up right now on the Retro Hack Shack After Hours. Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Aaron and I do all kinds of small, small, these videos are typically longer than on my main channel, but things that don't make it to the main channel, Retro Hack Shack, I work on, for example, little repair videos and things like that. And this is one of those times where I need to do a repair. As I mentioned, this is my multi floppy tower that I built out of this wonderful Micron PC, and it's got a combo drive up here that has three and a half inch disk and five and a quarter 1.2 megabyte disk here. And then it's also got a GoTech emulated floppy drive here if we need that. And then it's also got a 360k drive here for those old disks. And just for the fun of it, I threw in a internal zip drive so that I can run stuff off of here. And it even has a CF card adapter here, CF to IDE card adapter. And that has an emulated or a hard drive running off the CF card into the IDE adapter. It's a great little project. I will link to this video if you want to see how I put all this together. It was quite a journey to get there, but I did get there finally. And it's been working great until I was testing out some keyboard adapter products I was working on. And one of them, not sure which one. Well, I am sure which one. It was the one I made. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that it was that that one. The one that I was fooling with, I must have got my wires crossed literally. And I think I blew the keyboard controller or something because now when I plug in a keyboard, I get nothing out of the keyboard. So what I want to do today is break this down, take the motherboard out and see what's going on. Hopefully we can tell if it is actually the keyboard controller or maybe something else. And then if we can identify what's wrong, we can fix it. So let me go ahead and break the motherboard out of this thing because there are lots of things in the way and that wouldn't be very interesting just to see me disconnect all this stuff. Let me get the motherboard out of here and then we'll take a closer look at this multi floppy PC. All right, I've got the motherboard out of the case and luckily I had a power supply sitting here from the previous project I was working on. So I was able to just hook that up. I forgot how nice of a motherboard this is. You can go watch the previous video that I will link to and I'll try to remember to put it in the description. It's actually a very nice motherboard, six memory slots. It's got some extra cache sockets up here that I could fill if I wanted to. And yeah, it's just kind of got everything really nicely laid out. So I went ahead and got a PS2 keyboard here, this IBM PS2 keyboard, which I'm pretty sure works. And I went and put the video card back in. So the first thing I want to do is just turn it on and make sure the problem is still there. So let's go ahead and see if this will power up. Got a green light on the motherboard. Fan is spinning. And we're looking for video here. There we go. Video, blah, blah, blah. Keyboard error. So right away we see keyboard error. And if I hit F1 or delete or anything, there's no light on the keyboard. So it doesn't even look like it's getting power, but we'll find out. So yeah, it just says keyboard error and there's nothing, nothing I can do to get this working. So the problem is definitely still here. All right, well, I've got the motherboard turned over, flipped over, and I'm just kind of trying to trace out where these lines go, because since there wasn't even a five volt detection or the, the LED didn't even come on on the keyboard, it could just be that maybe the five volt or the ground is disconnected here somehow from these things. So I went ahead and was taking a look around in this section, which is where those two ports are connected. And I got out my trusty handy dandy magnifying device, the phone here, so I can really zoom in. I did notice something right away on here. And I was just looking at this main line that comes in and goes down over here to this capacitor and then continues over to the second PS2 plug over here. So what that means is that what this is either a power or a ground line. We can figure that out in a little bit. But I noticed that this was coming over here to this capacitor. And if I zoom right down in on that capacitor, 
So just on the left side of this capacitor right here, where my finger is, it looks like to me, there's a gap. And so maybe that's a cold solder joint with an SMD component. I don't know, but that line there is not part of the capacitor. I believe that line is a gap in the solder. So the solder potentially is not making good connection with that capacitor. And that right there could be the whole problem. All right, so I've got my multimeter in resistance mode and I'm just gonna take a look at this connection here. And I think it goes to ground, very hard to see with my eyes, but does it go to ground right there? Okay, with my bad eyes, I can just barely see the trace coming around here. And I think, where the heck is that capacitor? Is that it? Yeah, so this side of the capacitor is reading less than an ohm. And my probes are reading just a tiny bit less than that. So part of that is the resistance of the, the, the wires themselves, which I have uh, zeroed out, but it's still, still showing up a little bit. So we've got a direct connection there between this side of this capacitor and this pin right here. And like I said, this goes over here to some of these other ones. Let's see if I can touch it. There we go. So yeah, so, so this particular trace is fine and it's going over to this capacitor. Now let's look at the other side of this and see what's going on. So if we go to the other side of the capacitor, which I believe is there, it kind of looks open. I mean, it might be charging the capacitor a little bit, but I don't think that should be open. Let's try capacitance mode and see what we get. Doing this in circuit isn't the best. Okay, so we're getting 100 nanofarad on the, the solder metal where I thought that gap was and the other side of the cap. And if I go kind of in the middle here, yeah, it's the same. So I guess it is making good connection. It just looks like there's a problem there, but nope. That's okay, and, and 100 nanofarad is, is kind of a typical value that I would expect to see there. Okay, well, that was worth a shot. Something else that's worth a shot, if you're interested in PCB manufacturing, is the sponsor of today's episode, PCB Way. PCB Way offers low-cost, high-quality PCB manufacturing and a whole lot more. They're currently celebrating their New Year sale with up to 50% off, tons of coupons and discounts. See the site for details. So head on over to PCBWay.com and I thank them for their support of the Retro Hack Shack. All right, well, I went ahead and grabbed another motherboard because I don't think there's five volts getting to the keyboard or mouse connectors on that other one that we're troubleshooting. I found this one. It's not exactly the same, but what I want to test for here, this one's a little later, and I just want to test if the five volts on the PS2 connectors is actually going directly or getting its voltage directly from the power supply. It should be. I think that's the way it works, but there's always the chance on one of these motherboards that it's going through a, a secondary regulator or something weird like that. I don't know why that would happen. But anyway, I just wanted to verify first that I'm getting five volts on directly from the power supply to the PS2 connector. So on this one, I went ahead and clipped up to my probe here on pin four of the PS2 connector, which should be five volts. And then over here on the ATX side, these top two pins over here on the ATX power supply should be five volts. So if I touch either one of those with this end, we should see that it's connected and it is. It's down to about 0.5 ohms or something like that. And if we touch the other one, come on eyes, work for me. Okay. Yeah. So these, these two pins right here that I'm touching should be five volts and they are directly connected to the PS2 connector. Now let's take a look at the motherboard in question. All right. So I'm on pin four of the keyboard port over here. And if we go up here to where there should be five volts, there is nothing connecting, connected over here to the PS2 connector. Now I'm in pin four of the mouse connector and nothing should be right here on five volts. So the PS2 connectors are not getting five volts for some reason. And by the way, that power pin is the one that's connected over here to this capacitor. Still wondering if that is part of the problem. Maybe the, cap oh, the capacitor looks good. Uh, I've got to figure out what's on the other side of this capacitor. Yeah. So the other side of that capacitor does go to ground. So it's just like a filter capacitor or whatever. All right, so I got to figure out where that five volt is going. It might be a passive that just went bad. Maybe I over volted something or I don't know, did something and it just blew a, like a resistor or, or a capacitor or something. All right, so I'm taking another look at this area and there's a couple of places where that five volt line goes. 
So hopefully I can see this on camera. If not, I'll just feel around for it until I find it. <laughs> Cause I usually have to use a uh, microscope to see this stuff these days until my eyes heal. So this five volt line is connected to both of these PS2 ports here, but then it kind of makes its way over here to these five pins. I believe it's right here. Yeah. And this pin is the five volts on the battery connector, the external battery connector. So we've got a connection from the P five volts on the PS2 ports to the battery connector, right? And then it also makes its way down here to somewhere on this part of the board down here. So that five volt line is still connected down here to one of these through hole pins here. Where was it there? So if we turn the board over, we should be able to see what's on the other side of that. Okay, so I flipped the board over. This is the area that we were looking at and something is definitely piquing my interest over here. And it's this green thing right here, which usually is a fuse. And I have connectivity right here on this side. Let me just make sure that is a fuse. Since my eyes don't work well. Yes, it says F1 right there. So if I take a look at this side of the fuse, I have connectivity. And if I take a look at this side of the fuse, I should have connectivity. And guess what? I do not. So I've got connectivity on one side, no connectivity on the other. So indeed, I think what happened was in my testing, I fed in some bad voltage or something on this line, or perhaps this fuse is just old, or I did something, maybe I shorted it out or something in my testing, and guess what? I blew that fuse. So if I go in my parts bin and find another fuse to replace this with, hopefully we'll get our keyboard working again. Well, and there's the fuse. Unfortunately, it cracked when I was taking it out, but it appears to be a five amp fuse. And you can see in there, I mean, there's that little outer shell on the fuse, that green part, and then there's a metal holder and a glass tube on the inside. So I've actually, I don't think I've ever cracked one of these open before, but very similar to a regular glass fuse that you would put in. You know, one of the larger kinds it has the same kind of elements in it. I never realized that before. And the only 5 amp fuse I could find uh, in my boxes was this one. It's a little bit of a different style. It's a, it has a round top like this and it's meant to go through, it is through hole, but it's meant to go through a smaller or more narrower connection between the pins there. But this is 5 amp and I can just bend the legs so that it'll fit correctly and it should work just fine. Now I'm just gonna take a stab at this. See if I can get it close enough or whether I need to go. No, that's way too wide. How's that? Ooh, getting closer. Closer still. Come closer! Closer still. There, that looks just about right. And I'm hoping I can do this top side on the board, which will help, my, help me out tremendously with my vision. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to just put a nice glob of solder on that through hole there before I even get started. And I'll do that on both holes and then should be able to work this down in one at a time into those slots or maybe by, you know, levering it back and forth as I go back and forth, I should be able to get this down close enough to the board where it'll work. Okay, it's looking good. I can see it with my phone. Doesn't look like I shorted anything out. So just cut those leads off and do a test. And we should know right away if I can get continuity on the five volt lines. Oh yeah, baby. Continuity on the five volt lines. I think that's gonna fix it. I'm ready for the tests. Got my video plugged in, got my keyboard plugged in. We should see a blue light here shortly after I turn this on. Here we go. Thought I saw lights for a second. Uh, previous boot incomplete, F1. Let's try this again, I just rebooted. The power switch stuck the first time when I was doing it. Let's hit F2 to go into setup, maybe? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is totally working now. So it was just the fuse. Luckily it had a fuse, so I didn't blow up the keyboard controller on this thing, wherever that is. I, I could never find it. There is a microcontroller over here in this part of the board. They might be using that microcontroller as the keyboard controller but this is totally working now this key the keyboard works yay 
back in business. I can get this thing back installed and start testing floppies again. This has been out of commission for like six months because of my little mess here. So there you go, a quick fix on a keyboard problem. And who knows how many people have been stymied by a simple fuse on a motherboard that blows when something goes wrong. And it's a simple, easy fix. Don't have to throw this out. Now I can continue using it. I hope you liked that video. If you did, there's another one right over here that YouTube thinks you want to watch and consider supporting the channel. Thanks to all my patrons and members. New members now available on the main channel, Retro Hack Shack. So sign up and you'll get all the same benefits either on YouTube membership or on Patreon. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. End of line.